This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Chernobyl Pets Discovered in the abandoned ruins of Pripyat, this eerie irradiated mummy is all that remains of a dog that escaped the cleanup following the 1986 explosion of Chernobyl Reactor No. 4. Unfortunately, nuclear disaster led to a sad end for most pets of previous residents in the area. When civilians were forced to evacuate 36 hours after the incident, they were not allowed to bring their pets. In fact, most had only 50 minutes to pack and get on a bus. Cats, dogs, and other beloved household animals had to be left behind. The entire area had been blanketed with a cloud of radioactive isotopes from a fire that blazed in the core for 10 days. It needed to be purged of all life. It was bulldozed, buried, and sprayed with chemicals to trap radioactive waste near the ground. To complete the sterilization, Soviet soldiers and local hunters were recruited to find the pet dogs that were left behind. This was done to prevent the spread of radiation. Not even puppies were spared. Still, it was impossible for those involved to take out every abandoned pet, especially those that roamed outside and hid. This left many dogs to continue inhabiting the radioactive area. It's estimated that by February 2018, the Chernobyl exclusion zone was home to about 300 strays. According to The Guardian, many of these had, quote, increased levels of radiation in their fur. More recently, some nonprofit organizations have been attempting to improve the lives of the abandoned animals. The Clean Futures Fund routinely visits the exclusion zone to capture the strays and treat them. A particular focus has been given to spaying, neutering, and vaccinating. The group hopes to extend the lives of the dogs already found there and prevent the birth of more puppies. With more relaxed rules of entry, several puppies have been extracted and given up for adoption. Starting in 2018, it became legal for dogs and cats to be taken from the area. Specialist charities have also worked on making sure that the fate of these animals is less grim than that of the dog mummy. Like many of you, Dark Five has been working from home most of this year. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-improvement through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. For instance, learn about filmmaking from home with a class from award-winning documentary filmmaker Penny Lane, who teaches you how to turn found footage into a compelling video. Like Penny, we never really work behind a camera. Instead, learn how to tell a compelling story that transforms archival and found content. Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first thousand Dark 5 viewers who click on the link in the description below. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. Click on the link in the description below for your free two months today. Firefighters. In the immediate aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, Igor Kostin was one of five photographers allowed at the site. This access allowed him to capture nightmarish images of a radioactive purgatory, such as this one of a doomed first responder. The first firefighters arriving after the explosion were not told that the reactor containment vessel had been breached. The first to arrive was a Chernobyl power station brigade led by Vladimir Pravik. They were not told about the dangers of the radioactive debris and believed that the fire was simply the result of an electrical circuit malfunctioning. They recalled the dreadful realization of finding pieces of burning graphite that had been ejected from the core and described the radiation as, quote, tasting like metal, while feeling, quote, pins and needles penetrate their faces. Fire engine driver Gregory Kmey would later recall his harrowing experience, stating, quote, We arrived there at 10 or 15 minutes to 2 in the morning. We saw graphite scattered about. Misha asked, Is that graphite? I kicked it away. But one of the fighters on the other truck picked it up. It's hot, he said. We didn't know much about radiation. Even those who worked there had no idea. There was no water left in the trucks. Misha filled a cistern, and we aimed the water at the top. Then those boys went up the ladder, and I never saw them again. Bio-robots. Scoop. Scoop. Run away. In this dystopian photo by Costin, human liquidators cleaned the roof of Chernobyl Reactor No. 3. Robots initially working on the site could not cope with the intense radioactivity and were replaced after two days. The liquidators were teams of both civilian and military personnel who were tasked with dealing with the immediate consequences of the nuclear disaster on site. They have since been credited with containing the immediate and long-term damage to the area. The most dangerous radioactive materials were disposed of by military liquidators wearing protective gear. They were called, quote, bio-robots by the military. 
The workers were limited to 40 to 90 seconds of radiation exposure on the rooftops due to the highly radiative blocks of graphite and debris. Although the bio-robots were only supposed to perform the 40 to 90 seconds cleanup once per person, some were sent back to the rooftops over five times. They only removed about 10% of the rooftop debris. The rest was removed later by unprotected liquidators. Several radioactive emergency vehicles were subsequently buried in trenches, but many others used by liquidators were left on a field in the zone. Since then, several of these vehicles had been scavenged for functioning, albeit highly radioactive, components. The liquidators often worked under terrible conditions with little to no protective gear. Many exceeded radiation safety limits by up to a hundred times and experienced rapid declines in their health. Those who lived to tell the tale qualified for considerable social rewards since they were given veteran status. They were praised by the government and media as heroes and were awarded medals along with special certificates. Over 600,000 people were recognized for their contributions in the cleanup effort. Ultimately, the radiation exposure among them varied wildly. Some experienced no ill effects, but many of the liquidators suffered harsh consequences for their heroism. Radiative Carriage Many residents living near Chernobyl were not informed of the catastrophic nuclear accident until days later. In the village of Tatsenki, Kostin photographed this liquidator pushing an abandoned infant, lost in haste or despair. Allegedly, the liquidator found the baby in its carriage during cleanup while measuring radiation levels. The village sits inside an abandoned zone of alienation that serves as an excluded area around the reactor covering a 30-kilometer or 19-mile radius. It's also known as the 30-kilometer zone, or for Russians, simply the zone. The zone was established by the Soviet armed forces immediately after the 1986 disaster. It was used to decide who had to be evacuated. The area has since been under the control of the military. Borders around the zone have been redrawn since, and it now covers a considerable amount of Ukraine. It's administered by the Polesi State Radioecological Reserve and managed by the State Emergency Service of Ukraine. The power plant and the highly radiative sarcophagus are under separate administration. Around 2,600 square kilometers, or 1,000 square miles, fall into the area. Radioactive contamination and nuclear fallout reach a peak within the area, so public entry is limited and residing inside is prohibited. The surrounding area is packed with villages of resettled residents. Nearly 120,000 residents were evacuated, told they would only be gone three days and that they should leave everything. Mostly elderly Samozali residents are believed to still reside illegally inside the zone of alienation today. Immediately following the cleanup, about 10,000 people illegally returned or remained within the zone. Many of them lived within Chernobyl itself, at considerable risk. In 2009, the Samozali population was estimated at around 400 people. In 2012, that number was 197. During that same time, only one person is believed to have been officially born in the zone. On August 25, 1999, 46-year-old Lydia Savenko gave birth to a girl after returning to Chernobyl with her husband, Mikhail Bradernikov. Maria Savenko resided with her family in Chernobyl until 2006, and then moved to a village outside the exclusion zone to attend a boarding school. Her mother stayed in Chernobyl. Authorities have since reported that squatters have taken over houses in many affected towns without permission. Ukrainian Minister of Social Policy Natalia Korolevska announced in April of 2013 that settlers would be obtaining social support from the government. She firmly stated that their occupation of the zone would still be considered illegal and that moving to the zone was still prohibited. The ministry does not register the number of illegal settlers. These days, it's been estimated to oscillate between 200 and 2,000 people. The issue became more pressing after the war in Donbas in 2014. Several refugees relocated to the empty zone, having nowhere else to go. In February 2019, it was announced that the boundaries of the exclusion zone may be reduced due to improving radiation levels. Radioactive Reindeer the fallout from Chernobyl extended thousands of miles beyond Ukraine and is documented here by Robert Deltradici. The photographer witnessed a temporary freezer being filled with radioactive reindeer in Swedish Lapland. It's estimated that Chernobyl released 400 times more fission product into the atmosphere than the Hiroshima atomic bomb. 80% of Sweden's reindeer population was poisoned by a cloud formed by a mere 2 pounds .9 kilograms, of radioactive cesium-137. When the radioactive material leaked into the surrounding lakes and woodlands, Massive contamination of vegetation and wildlife took place. As a result, the green lichen fungus that deer are fond of became highly radioactive. Since lichen lacks roots, it absorbs its nutrients from the air, making it the perfect soaked sponge for the cesium-137. Snacking became dangerous for the reindeer, 
but the unknowing animals consumed the fungus and became contaminated themselves. The Sami people, inhabitants of the area, had a 9,000-year-old history of relying on deer for food, money, and clothing. These traditions persisted until the Chernobyl disaster disrupted their way of life. The radiation levels made the reindeer dangerous to humans. Their tainted meat was dyed blue and buried in large nuclear waste disposal pits in uninhabited areas. As the Europeans passed strict regulations regarding the reindeer, the Sami people freed their herds and had to give up on much of their rich history. <laughs>